Hello everybody, my name is Marvin D. Cherry and I have the blessed privilege of being the senior pastor here at Hightown Church in Northport, Alabama. Uh, thank you for joining us on our Wednesday Bible study. Of course, we're, we're still not gathering in person, uh, but again, not gathering uh, does not keep us from coming together. And so we thank God for that. I uh, ask that you prepare your hearts and minds as we study the word of God today. Uh, for you, it may be night, maybe uh, mid-morning, but uh, we thank God that we get to study uh, the word of God uh, via YouTube and, and Facebook. And so uh, praise God, although there is this pandemic that's going on around us, uh, we still have, again, the blessed opportunity uh, to receive a word from the Lord. I thank God for that because uh, somebody was telling me the other day, it just almost seems like we've not missed a beat. You know, the word has gone forth and uh, we're still uh, receiving good preaching and teaching and, and singing, not just here at Hightown, but uh, churches from all across the way. And I thank God for all of the pastors and all of the churches who have decided that, you know what, we're not just going to wait until uh, the coronavirus go away. Uh, we're going to continue to preach. We're going to continue to teach the word of God, and we're going to continue to promote uh, fellowship uh, with one another, although we, we're having to do it on the airways now. So we thank God for that. We thank God again for you. I'm going to ask that you join us in a word of prayer. And then we're going to study the word of God. Uh, by the way, I'll be teaching from this uh, subject, and that is uh, peace in a pandemic how you and I can have peace in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, pray with me. God, our Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name today. Thank you for allowing us uh, to connect with one another, uh, to come together uh, at such a time as this, uh, in a way like this. We thank you for that, Father. I pray that your anointing would go forth with, with great power today. Father, receive the glory from whatever uh, shall be said. I pray that hearts will be blessed. I pray that your people will be encouraged today. Father, I thank you that they'll be lifted up in their spirits, that they'll be encouraged, uh, and that they will know and understand and believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that it is your will uh, that we receive peace and that not only we receive your peace, but that we live in and that we walk in your peace each and every day of our lives. Come and join us, Father. Uh, through your Holy Spirit in this Bible study teaching uh, and have your way is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Again, I want to talk to you or teach from this subject, and that is peace in a pandemic, peace and in a pandemic. You know, COVID-19 uh, has literally turned our world upside down and inside out. Uh, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Um, but there's a new way of life that uh, it seems that we're having to get used to. Uh, and, and so a lot of things have changed. Uh, COVID has done that. COVID, rather, has done that for us. It has uh, literally changed the way we live our lives. It has changed the way we conduct our lives. Um, the coronavirus has brought with it, and you know this to be the case, it has brought with it uh, this level of fear. Uh, it's brought with it panic and confusion. Uh, it has also brought with it death and destruction. And so the question is, is it possible, knowing what we know, seeing what has happened, seeing what this pandemic, this, uh, this virus has done to people, uh, nations all around this world, is it possible for us to have uh, peace in the middle of a pandemic? And the answer is absolutely yes. And you ought to just say it right where you are. Amen. Even if you don't quite believe it, say it because it's true anyway. The answer to the question is yes. Can we have peace in the middle of a pandemic? Again, the answer for us is yes, 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 yes. And again, I say yes, we can have peace. We can have peace in a world that's filled with trouble and a world that's filled with worries. You and I can experience and know the peace of a loving God. In fact, here's what I believe. I believe that we'll either live in peace or we may find ourselves going to pieces. That is literally falling apart. And certainly we don't want that to happen. I believe that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants us to have fear. I mentioned, er, uh, not fear rather, but to have peace. Not, certainly not fear. I believe that it's his, it is his will that you and I experience peace. 
a peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what the Lord wants for us to experience his peace, no matter what's going on around us. And there are a lot of things that are going on. There are so many things that are happening. Sometimes, you know, it's hard for us to keep up with it. So many people have lost their jobs and there are people who have lost their uh, their lives even even. Uh, and the world doesn't look familiar anymore. But I believe that even with that, uh, we can uh, have peace and we can have and live in uh, the peace that God has supplied uh, to each and every one of us. Again, the Lord doesn't want us to, uh, to be in fear. He doesn't want us to worry and to be stressed out. The Lord God doesn't want us to be filled with anxiety, but rather he wants us to live in his peace, to not respond to what's going on around us, but rather to respond to what's going on and what's happening on the inside of us. And what's happening on the inside of us is that Jesus lives. He lives on the inside of us through uh, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God has fixed it. I believe that, that our Heavenly Father has indeed fixed it so that we can have peace. So you and I can have peace as early as right now. And we don't have to wait and take some pill and uh, to, 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 to get in a place of peace. Uh, we don't have to wait for things to get better around us before we enjoy the peace of the Lord. I believe that, you know what, God wants us to have peace and he wants us to have peace right now. And the church said, amen. I want to give you the, the definition of, of biblical peace. Here's what biblical peace is. Uh, biblical peace is to really and truly be in right relationship with God. Biblical peace uh, is to be in right relationship with God. Think about it. Think about this. When we're in right relationship with God, we have no reason to worry. When, when you and I are in right relationship with God, when we're walking according to God's word, when we live lives that are pleasing to God, then you know what? That takes away fear. It takes away worry. Uh, it, 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 alleviates from, uh, it, it alleviates us from having anxieties. Why? Because we know that we put our trust, we put our faith and our confidence in the living God. We know that we are living according to what? To his principles. And so whatever happens, happens to us, whether it be good or bad, whatever's going on around us, whether it be good or bad, we do know this, that all things work together. That is, all things are working together for what? For our good. Why? Because we are called, we are the called according to God's purpose. We know that God has a purpose, even with this pandemic and even with all of the negative things, all of the hard things, the hurtful things. The painful things that we are uh, that we're having to endure, I believe that God has a purpose for it. And I believe that the and I'm not saying that God sent it. I'm not saying that God caused it, but I am saying that God will oftentimes take the bad things, uh, the hard things, the awful things that happens to humanity, those things that happen to us. And he has a way of getting good out of them. Not only does he have a way of getting good out of those things, but he also has a way of getting glory out of those things. And so, no, God doesn't send these things. God doesn't uh, call, call, uh, cause these things to be. But, you know, I believe that the Lord will take the worst of things uh, and turn uh, them oftentimes into the best of things for us. And the church said, amen. So that's the definition of peace. I think that the simple definition of peace is being in right relationship with God. Because, again, when we are in right relationship with God, amen, we begin to see things from God, God's perspective. Uh, we know that God will take care of us because he always takes care of his own. I believe this, and that is uh, since um, uh, uh, peace is being in right relationship with God, then we should also understand this. Peace then will start with God. Peace has its its foundation in knowing God. Amen. If you want to become stable, amen. If you don't want to go out of your mind, if you don't want to, uh, you, you know, this stuff to get to you, then let me tell you something. Get in God and in God you will find and receive what? The peace of God. The first step then in having real peace in a real pandemic and we're right smack dab in the middle of one does not begin with a brand new vaccine. 
And I know that there's a hurry up to get a vaccine and I want them to get a vaccine. We need a vaccine. But when it comes to peace, when it comes to real peace, real peace is not going to come from a vaccine because, see, they'll get a vaccine for uh, for the coronavirus, COVID-19. They'll get a, a, va a vaccine for that and, and things will be better. But then there'll be something else and then there'll be something else and there'll be a, a, another mountain to climb, another problem to solve. And so the, the, the issue, uh, the, the key, I believe, to real peace to lasting peace will not necessarily be found in a uh, in a vaccine it won't be found in other people it won't be found in our government it won't be found in a big old stimulus money package no it won't yeah it begins with true peace real peace will always begin with God it will always begin real peace begins with our real God and his name is Jehovah and his son is Jesus Christ and they are offering real uh, real peace uh, for those who will receive it. Now, I want to share three things with you about how we can have peace in the middle of a pandemic. Amen. Three things that I'll briefly share with you. And here's the first. And that is we need to make peace with God. We need to make peace with God. And we make peace with God through through a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's how we do that. We make peace with God through a relationship or our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one way to meet, make peace with God, and that is through Jesus Christ. No man can really come to the Father except by Jesus Christ. Amen. And so that's where it all begins. The journey of peace, having real peace begins when we do this, when we make peace, when we make peace with God through a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Look at Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 13 and 14. And this is from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, you, uh, uh, you who once were so far away by, uh, let me start over, Ephesians 2, 13 and 14. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were so far away by the blood of Christ have been brought near. Uh, amen. You've been brought near for he is our peace. Our bond of unity and harmony. Who is the he uh, that Paul is referring, for, referring to? Of Jesus Christ, of course. He's saying that Jesus Christ is our peace. Amen. There, there was a time when we were alienated from the love of God. We were alienated from the blessings of God. And we were alienated really from the peace of God. But by the blood of Jesus Christ, we've been brought near. We've been brought back. We've been close to God. And the church said, amen. We've been brought back to God. Uh, through our relationship with Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is our peace. Let me tell you something. There's nothing like knowing Jesus Christ for yourself. Uh, and, 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 and just the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, we go through some things in life. I just, not just I, but we buried my daddy, uh, Henry Cheer the third. Man, one of the hardest things that uh, I've ever had to do in my life. Uh, but God gave and he has given a peace that surpasses all understanding. I never thought the time would come when I'd have to say goodbye to one of my parents. But my daddy was called home to be with the Lord. And at one time I didn't know what what was going to happen and how I. But the, you know what? God reminded me, I am your peace. And I'm going to give you peace and you're going to make it through this. Amen. And I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that if it was not for the Lord, if it were not for the Lord, I'm talking about me now. I don't know what I would do. I don't know how it make it, how it take my next breath, because this one, this was a, this was <laughs> glory to God, but God and but the peace of God. And so I've been relying on the peace of God. And that peace has come to me through my relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. But now in Christ Jesus, uh, you who once were so far away by the blood of Christ have been what? You've been brought near for he is our peace and our bond. Uh, uh, of unity and harmony. Here's what the Apostle Paul is saying. He's saying that once long ago, our sins, our sins had taken, taken us away from the presence of God, away from the presence of God and away from the plan of God. And as a result, we, we had no plan. There was no real plan for us because we were absent and alienated from God and from the love of God. And so we, we, we had no promise. We had no purpose. And God knows we had no peace. We had no promise, we had no purpose, and we had no peace. But God, but God sent his son, the Prince of Peace. 
Jehovah God sent his son, the Prince of Peace. And you know what he sent him to do? He sent Jesus Christ to reopen and to reestablish the pipeline of peace. And so in other words, listen, if you'll accept my son, Jesus Christ, God is saying, then you know what? I'll give you the peace of heaven. I'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. I will give you the kind of peace that will help you to walk through wars and rumors of wars and all of the things that, uh, that are often thrown to us and at us uh, in this thing, this journey that we call life. Amen. When we choose Jesus to be our Savior, he gives us what? He gives us the peace of God. And not only does he give us the peace of God, but then he causes us to have peace with God. We get the peace of God and then we have peace with God. And the peace of God always brings unity. It will always bring unity and harmony and it brings hope. And so if you're out there today listening to our broadcast and maybe you feel like there's no hope, you, maybe you, you, you only see dark days ahead of you, hold on and cling to God's peace. Uh, rush into the arms of Jesus Christ because that's where peace begins. Peace begins when we give it all to him, when we give him every heartache, when we give him our anxieties, when we give him our fears. I'm talking about giving them to Jesus Christ now and that he knows what to do with them. And he has a way of making us feel but I wish you would try him. And if you've already tried him and if maybe you're struggling, amen, hold on to him a little tighter. Get in the word of God, meditate on the word of God and think about what he has promised you and think about how dear he is to you. Amen. The peace of God, it brings unity. It brings harmony and, and the peace of God brings, it gives to us hope. Look at John the 14th chapter and verse six. John 14 and six, Jesus said unto him, he says, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. Now we're talking about how we have to make peace with God and we make peace with God through a relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, uh, if we're going to get this peace that we, we so desperately need, it's going to come from God, but God is only going to give it to us if first we've entered into a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Understand this, and that is real peace. Lasting peace, genuine peace, authentic peace, authentic peace begins with our relationship with Jesus Christ, who is a real savior. And he's in the business of saving each and every day of our lives. Amen. John 14 and 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man again can come to the father except by me. Look at St. John, the 16th chapter and verse 33. Uh, the Lord says this. He says, these things have I spoken unto you. I love this verse. He says, these things I, I have spoken unto you, John 16 and 33, uh, that in me, listen to what he says. He says, in me, ye might have peace. And then he reminds us, uh, he says, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And in one verse, one place, the Lord says, because I live, you will live also. What is the Lord saying to us? He's saying, cheer up. He's saying, take courage. I believe what the Lord is saying to us is everything is going to be all right. I'm going to take care of you. Even when the, when, when the days are dark and the nights are long, I'm going to take care of you. Even when you don't know how to do anything else but cry, the Lord says, they're saying, take courage. Don't be afraid. I'm going to take care of you. And I'm going to start by giving you what? My peace. He says, in me. And let me tell you something. There's no need in looking for peace in anything else. There's no need in looking for real peace, lasting peace in anything else or anybody else. Amen. Except Jesus Christ, because you won't find it. And even if you find it, it won't last. It'll be seasonal at best. Amen. And so you, what you do, what you and I need to do is we need to find ourselves going back to Jesus because that's where our strength comes. That's where our strength comes. That's where our peace comes. And the church said, amen. Understand this nice words and nice gifts and nice treaties and nice love conferences and seminars. They're all real nice. But real peace can only come through Jesus Christ. It can only come through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's do this. Let's make our way back to Jesus again. You know, uh, let's love Jesus again. Let's let's make Jesus Christ number one again, because I can I can promise you this. I can almost promise you this. Not a one of us will ever live a life that is free from trouble. 
Amen. This pandemic, hopefully and prayerfully, it'll be over. And I don't know if it'll ever be all the way over. But, you know, uh, I, I do know this. No matter what we go through in life, no matter what we face, if we invite the Lord to go with us, we can have peace. We can have peace. Somebody was saying that people are, are people who are losing their jobs and they're losing business and people are taking their lives. God didn't give you life for you to take it because of what's going on around you. And you're not the first person to have a challenge. And this is the, not the first uh, real challenge that we faced in life. We can't give up and throw in the towel and we can't uh, isolate ourselves and, and just go die somewhere. We put our faith and trust in God because God is the God of peace. And he keeps he gives us his peace. He'll he, he, you know, he'll keep us in perfect peace. The Bible says when our minds are what stayed on him. And sometimes that's the bigger problem. Sometimes the bigger problem, the biggest problem is not the, the thing that's plaguing us or the thing that's bothering us or the trouble that is surrounding us. Sometimes a bigger problem is this, is that our mind or minds have not been stayed on God. Because things will happen. After this, there'll be something else. And maybe not for you and for your house, but somebody. You know, we, we're always going through something. But Jesus says, be of good cheer. He says, take courage. He, he says, in me, you have peace. I'm going to give you my peace. I'm going to give you my peace. I've already overcome the world. And, and I think one of the things that the Lord is saying is you can cheer up. You can be encouraged. Why? Because I've already overcome. And you think about the things that you've overcome. Some of the things that the Lord has already brought you through. And if the Lord has could overcome that, he can overcome this. If Jesus could overcome the cross, he can overcome anything. And he can help you overcome anything. And that's why he came. And that's why he loves you so much. Amen. The Lord does love you. You should understand that he loves you so much that he wanted you and wants you to have his peace. So then all of these nice gifts and all of that stuff, they will not and they cannot produce what? They cannot produce genuine peace, true biblical peace. They cannot do it. Jesus came all the way from heaven. I believe this. Jesus came all the way from heaven so that he could give us peace on earth all the way from heaven so that he could give us peace on earth so that we could have peace on earth even in the middle of a pandemic even during the middle of an outbreak of a virus that we cannot see with the naked eye here's the second thing that i want to share with you and that is make sure that you have peace within make sure that you have peace within make peace with god through a relationship with his son jesus christ and then make sure that you have peace on the inside of you no peace on the inside usually means that there's no peace on the outside either. Think about it. If you don't have peace on the inside, if you're not being ruled or controlled by the peace of God on the inside, you're not going to have peace on the outside. There's always going to be something that's got you worried and upset and stressed out and strained and all of that. But, but when we have peace on the inside, then you know what? We can have peace on the outside. You know what God has done? God has put his Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Not only has God put his Holy Spirit on the inside of us, but God has literally also placed on the inside of us his kingdom. Amen. He's given uh, he's placed his spirit on the inside of us and he's placed his kingdom on the inside of us. And together, both of those powerful entities produce something called supernatural peace. Where when you should be losing your mind, you're standing strong. When you should be when you should be broke down and torn up, but instead God is holding you up and keeping you up. That's a supernatural peace. And I'm not saying that you won't ever cry because God knows. Uh, even before this pandemic, uh, you know this, this 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 pandemic. If it hadn't made you cry, it will. There are things in life that will bring us to our knees and that will make us cry. And that doesn't make you or me any less a Christian or man or God or woman of God. No, but during those times, the Lord will, he'll send his peace and his peace on the inside of us will rise up. And it'll cause us to straighten up and to get up and to get on with life. I, I you know, and I, maybe I'll be talking about my dad for a while uh, somebody was telling me I, I was getting gas the other day and and um, I, I was putting gas in the vehicle and all of a sudden it just hit me uh, one of those waves and I just cried and I couldn't help but cry and this gentleman uh, in the pop over from me looked at me and he, yeah you Pastor Jared yeah, I, I am I'm trying to wipe the tears from my eyes and trying to hold back and trying to man up if you will and 
And he, he, he realized what was going on. He says, man, I, my condolences for you. And I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about your dad. And he says, uh, it's going to be all right. You're going to get better. Uh, and, and he says, you'll get over it, I promise you. <laughs> and I thanked him. I said, well, thank you so much. I appreciate your, your encouraging words. But when I got in my car, I remember thinking this. No, I won't. I won't ever get over my daddy. I'll never get over my dad not being here. Now, I, I, I know that the, the, the pain that I feel and the pain that all of us feel, uh, it'll get better. It'll get easier. Amen. But I, I'm not trying to get over uh, my dad and I've been here. I know the gentleman meant well. Bless his heart. Let me get back. The, the peace of God helps us no matter what we're going through. And sometimes when we think that we can't go through, then God sends a wave of his peace. And you think, how in the world did I make it through that? How did I make it through the loss of a job? How did I make it through having to go to the graveyard? How, did, how am I making it? i tell you how you're making it. God is, is constantly supplying you with his peace. And that's what he's doing. And that's what he do, does for us. Amen. Uh, uh, Romans 14 and 17. Romans 14 and 17. Uh, you, you know, b b before I read that verse and we looked at that verse, the Pharisees wanted to know when it comes to the kingdom of God, the Pharisees wanted to know from Jesus Christ. They says, when is the kingdom coming? Where, when is your kingdom coming? We want to know, you know, where, where is it going to be built or where will it be constructed? Where is it going to be located? What side of town is the kingdom going to be uh, a place? Now, remember, God helps us. He gives us peace by placing the Holy Spirit in our lives. And he also gives us peace by giving us what? Putting his kingdom on the inside and so the Pharisees and even some of the Lord's own uh, um, disciples, they wanted to know, where's the kingdom going to be? When is it going to be built? And then Jesus would tell them that the kingdom of God, it's not here. The kingdom of God is not here. It's not there. It's not in a location. It's not, can't literally, literally be or, or necessarily be pointed out geographically on a map somewhere. He, he says that the, the kingdom of God, my kingdom is not here or there. It's not in some town or some location, but the kingdom of God is within us. The Lord will tell his disciples. He says, my kingdom is on the inside of you. I've placed my kingdom on the inside of you. My kingdom surrounds you and my kingdom is always within your reach. Look at Romans 14 and 17. Uh, what, do we, uh, what do we get when we get uh, the spirit of God on the inside of us? And what do we get when we get the kingdom of God on the inside of us. Paul tells us in Romans the 14th chapter in verse 17 from the New Living Translation of the Bible, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or what we drink, but of living a life of goodness and what? And peace. By living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. There it is. The, the, yeah. So now we've got the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit producing what in our lives and for our lives? Goodness and peace. Amen. What a blessing. Everything that we need for peace and everything that we need to make it through life and through a pandemic and through anything else that would challenge us is already on the inside of us. And you may lose your job and you may lose your best friend and you may lose family members. You may lose your business that you invested so much in. You may you may no longer be popular. You may no longer be adored. You may no longer be accepted. The doctor may give you a bad report and your world may literally be falling down all around you. But I will tell you this. You can stay calm. You can remain calm, you can remain quiet, and you can remain controlled because the peace of God is on the inside of you. You can make it because the peace of God is on the inside of you. You can bounce back because the peace of God is on the inside of you. You can make it, why? Because the peace of God is on the inside of you. Glory to God. The Lord has adorned you and filled you with his peace. And understand this, the peace of God, God's peace is always first. It's always internal. 
It's on the inside of us first. It, it, it starts on the inside and then it shows itself or we see the results on the outside. And people oftentimes when you're going through something and when you're being ruled and controlled by the peace of God and the, and the, and the spirit of God and the kingdom of God, people want to know how in the world is she holding it together? How in the world has she kept her, uh, her sanity? How is that man making it through this? You know, with all that they've gone through, let me tell you something. I'll tell you how and why. Uh, the people are all able to make it. We're able able to make it and you can make it too when you allow God to give you his peace and to place his peace in your heart and to place his peace, his peace on the inside of you. And the church said, amen. So no matter what happens on the outside, we can remain calm because what? We have the peace of God. Amen. What happens? What happens? Listen to me. What happens when we don't have God's peace? What happens when we don't have the peace of God? I'll tell you what happens. We're quick to get upset. We're quick to fly off the handle. We make rash decisions. We find ourselves moving by fear. That is when we don't have the peace of God on the inside of us. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we move irrationally. We don't think right. When we don't have the, uh, uh, when we don't have the peace of God, we overreact. Amen. We respond out of the flesh and because of the flesh, when we don't have the peace of God, we become irritable. Not only do we become irritable, we oftentimes become irate. What else do we do when we, when we don't have the peace of God on the inside of us? We yell, we holler, we scream, we throw things, and we want to fight. Why? Because there's no peace on the inside that's able to work its way to the outside. When there is no peace on the inside, when there is no peace on the inside, there will be no peace on the outside. And the church said, amen. Listen to what Jesus said uh, in uh, uh, promise. He, he made, makes this wonderful promise about peace and not just some peace or any peace, but about his peace. John 14 to 27 from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Listen to what he says. He says, peace I leave with you. And the Lord is making it clear to his disciples, I've, I've got to leave. I didn't come to stay always. Amen. But I'm going to leave you something, a gift, a precious gift. He says in John 14 and 27, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. The Lord says, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. He says to his disciples, stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly unsettled. What a mighty God we serve. That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, take courage. I'm giving you a peace. He says, I don't want you to be fearful. I don't want you to be intimidated. I don't want you to be thrown around and knocked around by every wind of doctrine, by whatever the devil throws at you. You can have my peace. You can be calm and controlled. You can be, you can live a life that's not disturbed. You don't have to worry about being agitated. Why? Because I'm giving you a peace that will keep you from being unsettled. A peace that keeps you from being unsettled. You know what I've learned? And I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. There is always peace. Yeah, Th there's peace. Wherever Jesus is, there is peace. There is, wherever Jesus Christ is, there is peace. Now listen to me. If you don't have peace, if you consistently and constantly don't have peace, if you don't ever have any peace, it may be because you don't have any Jesus. Amen. Because where Jesus is, where the kingdom of God is, where the Holy Spirit of God is, he, they manufacture and they produce peace. You know what peace says? Peace says don't worry about it. Peace says don't stress about it. Peace says don't get worked up over it. Peace says don't be afraid or fearful. Peace says don't let it get you down. Peace says don't give up. Peace says don't throw in the towel. Peace says don't you dare give in. Peace says don't you do something foolish. And peace says don't do something that you'll regret tomorrow or later on today. Peace says Wait on God. And peace says trust in God. P peace says keep looking to God. Keep looking to the hills from whence cometh your help. Peace says keep listening to God. The peace of God says you keep listening to God and don't you ever, never, never, ever, never, ever give up on your God.
Remember, uh, you remember when Jesus was on the boat. You remember when Jesus said to the disciples, he said, let us go to the other side. Jesus was on the boat and what? The Bible says a storm came, a severe storm came. What happened? What happened? The disciples could not have peace as long as the storm was raging. Think about it. Well, listen, by faith, we can look at what they were running around. They were afraid and every man uh, for himself. What are we going to do? We're going down with the ship. We're not going to make it. As long as the storm was raging, they had no peace. As long as the storm was raising, or rather raging, they had no peace. inside they had no peace on the inside and that's why they act so seemly unseemly rather on the outside the disciples could not have peace while the storm was raging on the outside because they had no peace ruling them on the inside the disciples could not have any peace on the outside because they had no peace ruling and controlling them on the inside. The story was told of, a, of a, um, a new submarine, a new submarine that was being tested and, uh, and it had to be uh, submerged in the ocean uh, or submerged at sea for, for almost two weeks. What should have taken about four days would end up taking two weeks as they were testing this brand new submarine. Uh, when it returned to its home base, Somebody asked the captain this question. They asked the captain, how in the world did you hold up? And how in the world did you hold out? How did you hold up during that terrible storm? And the captain of the submarine responded, what storm? I didn't know that there was a storm. <laughs> Amen. Here's what happened. The submarine was so deep, so deep so deep in the ocean until the storms that were taking place on the surface had no effect on them in the deep part of the ocean. And here's what I'm saying to you and I, the deeper we go in Jesus, the deeper that we go in Christ Jesus, the less bothered we'll find ourselves about the negative things that are going on around us. Even this pandemic that's going on, the deeper we are in him, the more peace we have. So I say, let's go a little deeper. The deeper we go in Jesus, the more peace we have. Amen. And the things that would bother us don't bother us as much. Why? Because we found ourselves deep, deep uh, entrenched in Jesus Christ. Peace reminds us that God is still in control, even when everything around us is very much out of control. That's what peace does. It reminds us that even when everything around us is out of control, God is still in control. God is still on the throne and God is still saying, I've got this. I can handle this. I've got you and I can handle you. Here's the final thing that I'm going to share with you. And that is this. You make sure that you uh, that you have peace with others. Because we, we want to make peace with God and we want to make sure that we've got peace within. And I believe that if we make peace with God and if we've got peace ruling us on the inside, then you know what? We'll have peace with those who are around us. Yeah. See, because we, we, we can't be out of peace or not be in peace with people and say that we're in peace with God. That's a conflict. And so we've got to deal with it. Right. So make sure finally. Amen. We're talking about having peace in a pandemic. Make sure that you have peace with others. The Bible tells us to do this, and that is to make every attempt, to make every effort to live in peace with other people. But what happens? What happens when people don't want to make peace with us? And I, I hear this all the time. And you know what? I've tried to like them and I've tried to love them. You know what? And I've speak to them and they still act like I'm a ghost and won't speak back. And I'm talking about preachers and I'm talking about uh, spiritual people. You, you know, uh, you know, look at me and won't even speak to me. I try to talk to them and they for some reason they hate. Well, you can't do anything about that. Once you've done all that you can do, once you've waved the white f flag, once you've said, you know what? Let's make peace. about That's all you can do. Then, then the rest you leave up to them and you leave it up to God. Romans 12 and 18 says, if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, 
live peaceably with all men. So what is Paul saying? He says, you just make sure that you, you, you've done your part and that you're doing your part. And Paul is not saying run up behind somebody, uh, but what he is saying, make sure that you've made every effort. Make sure from your heart that you know that you've done everything to bridge the gap or to repair the relationship or to make amends or whatever the case may be. And then you leave the rest to God. Don't run up. In fact, I'm telling you, don't run up behind anybody. I might get in trouble for that. I hope I don't, Lord. Help me. If it be possible, as much as it lies within you, live peaceably with all men. We are required to do everything in our power to, power to be peaceable with all people. But if they don't receive it again, it's up to them and God. If we have, and here's what I believe. I believe that if we have peace with God, and if we have the peace of God, we should be able to live in peace with each other. I mean, it stands to reason that if I've got peace with God, peace of God, then I should be able to live in peace with others. I want us to see how Jesus Christ honored the honor that he bestowed upon people who seek after and people who go after peace. Matthew 5 and 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You see that? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. God. You know what Jesus can do? I believe that Jesus can bring peace between people. He can bring peace between families and nations. Um, and I believe that he can bring peace even between enemies. And he can bring peace even during this time of pandemic. He can do it. He can do it. But what we've got to do uh, as it relates to others now being at peace, we've got to make sure that we stay away from things and people that cause division and things and people that will break peace or break the peace. And finally, I want you to see this. Look at what happens to people who walk in the power of peace. In the book of Proverbs, the 14th chapter and verse 30, this is from the New Living Translation of the Bible. This is what happens to people who walk in the power of peace. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. A peaceful heart leads to a, a peaceful body. In other words, Peace is good for so much. Peace is good for our overall health. I believe that uh, we look better and we, and, and we feel better and we can live better when we're walking in peace. And I'm not just talking about walking in peace with some people, but when we really and truly make it our business, it becomes part of who we are. You know what? I want to really and truly live in peace with everybody because there's a pandemic out there. People are leaving here and I don't have time to be playing with my soul. And so I want to get it right. If I've never gotten it right before in my life, if I've never lived by the word of God a day in my life, you know what? Time is winding up and I don't want to play with this. I want to make I want to make sure that in this season and at this time in life that I am living uh, a life of peace because I made peace with God, I have peace within, and I walk in peace with my brothers and sisters. Amen. Can we have peace in the midst of a pandemic? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for speaking to our hearts. We thank you, dear God, for being the provider of peace. And I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. Father, you made us all and you know what we go through. You know what we're going through. I pray, dear God, that uh, men and women will come and seek you uh, through a relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that once they do that, that they'll realize and know the peace that you so gladly give and the peace that you so gladly offer. Thank you for that. Father, give peace through uh, to those who will receive your son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. And Father, I pray that, that we would stir up the peace within, that we would allow the peace to make its way to us in our hearts, and, and that we would live by peace, that we would be governed by peace, and that we would allow ourselves to be controlled by your peace. Your peace is like a referee controlling our lives. Thank you for that, Father. Encourage somebody today. And in Jesus' name, thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you, Father, for this day. And Lord, I thank you that, you know what, we can even live at peace with each other. Give us what we need. Now, in our, in our own strength and in the flesh, we can't do it. But if we've got the kingdom, your kingdom on the inside of us, and if we have your, your Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, then we, we can live peaceably with people, other people. And we say thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that's about all for uh, 
our, our study today. Uh, thank you for joining us, and I hope and pray that we'll have an opportunity to see each other again uh, uh, as we study God's Word uh, through Wednesday Bible study. God bless you, and may His peace be yours, not only for this day, but for the rest of your lives. Bye-bye. It's going to be a great day.